we start by uh, Joy Wei Liu. About the CDFW mass anomaly from dark sector with the Chukibel Higgs portal. Please start. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Uh, okay, can, can you hear me? Yeah, sorry. Okay, okay, let, let me start. Uh, so first I wanna thank the organizers for uh, inviting me to give this talk. Uh, this talk is uh, uh, based on the uh, following paper. I uh, collaborated with uh, Mingxuan Du uh, and Pranath. Uh, so uh, in our, our paper, we uh, constructed a new model to explain the uh, CDF uh, uh, WMS anomaly. Uh, in our model, we introduce a dark sector that contains uh, a neutron uh, gate boson. And we also introduce uh, Stuckerberg Higgs portal interaction to, uh, to feed the, uh, the CDF results. Oh, sorry. Okay. So th this is the outline of the talk. Uh, I will first briefly uh, discuss the CDF WMS anomaly because it has been discussed by uh, previous speakers in this uh, workshop. Next, I, I will uh, introduce the Stuckerberg mechanism and the uh, Stuckerberg extended models. Uh, then I will uh, discuss, discuss our new model in which we uh, introduce uh, uh, Stuckerberg, Stuckerberg Higgs portal interaction to explain the CDF uh, WMAS anomaly. Uh, I will also show the uh, canonical uh, Stuckerberg mass mixing terms uh, cannot work. Uh, in the end, I will discuss uh, a number of uh, experimental constraints on this model, including uh, ZPO observables and uh, recent uh, uh, LSC constraints. Okay, uh, let, let, let me start with the uh, CDF W mass anomaly uh, and also its uh, implications. Uh, because the, the, this has been uh, discussed by uh, previous speakers in the workshop, I will just uh, briefly mention the, uh, the CDF results. Okay, so as we all know, uh, the recent CDF uh, W mass results show that uh, um, the, the CDF W mass measurement is uh, heavier than the SM expectations by uh, seven sigma uh, deviations. Um, although there's some uncertainty, I think the, there's, a, the, uh, there's a big gap between uh, experimental results from CDF and the SM expectation. Um, Okay, if, if, if the, this experimental result is indeed uh, true. Okay, to, to understand the, the, this anomaly, uh, I will first uh, uh, just briefly uh, review the uh, gate boson mass terms in, in the standard model. As all, we all know that the uh, W and Z masses come from the um, spontaneous symmetry breaking in the standard model, the mass terms are uh, in these uh, covariant derivative terms acting on the Higgs doublets. Uh, here I, I write down the covariant derivative contains the hypercharge field B mu and the SU2 gate bosons A, A, A mu, the three gate bosons. And the gauge coupling is GY for hypercharge and G2 for, uh, for SU2L, as we all uh, are familiar. And the phi is the Higgs doublet. Um, after uh, the spontaneous symmetry breaking, uh, phi develops uh, a vacuum expectation value. This uh, valve uh, eventually leads to W and Z masses. 
Okay, so now, now let's look at the, the mass terms after the, uh, the symmetry breaking. So, uh, so we, we can write the, the mass term in, in the following way. The first two terms are the uh, charged gauge bosons in, in this electroweak sector. The last two terms are the neutron gauge bosons. So from the, the charge gauge boson mass terms, a, we can Im immediately get the W mass, which is a half G2V, uh, as we all uh, know. Next, we, we, we look at the uh, neutron gauge boson mass terms in the standard model, uh, which are a little uh, complicated than the charge gauge bosons. So, so there, there are two neutron gauge bosons. One is the hypercharge B, the other one is the, uh, the neutron component at the, the SU2L gauge boson. Uh, so, so one can write the mass, the, the mass term in the, the matrix form. Uh, so as you can see here, the A3 has the same mass as the charge W boson, uh, but there's also mass mixing terms between the, the, the B field and the A3 field. So, uh, as we all know that this, uh, the, 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 uh, one has to diagonalize this mass matrix. The diagonalization of this mass matrix leads to two mass eigenstates. One is the uh, Z boson. The other one is the massless photon. And the diagonalization is, is achieved by one rotation angle known as this uh, uh, weak rotation angle or theta W. Okay, so now let's go back to the uh, CDF result to uh, take a closer look at the numbers. The CDF W mass uh, is larger than the standard model expectation. And the uncertainty of this uh, CDF result is, is, is uh, only nine MeV. The SM value, is, ha the uncertainty of the theoretical uh, uh, value is only six MeV. Then you take the difference of the uh, CDF number uh, and the standard model expectation, you get uh, about 76 MeV, which is a seven sigma U if you're adding these uh, error bars in quadrature, okay? Uh, now because these uh, W and Z masses are uh, generated by the uh, spontaneous symmetry breaking of this uh, X potential, the, this anomaly uh, is certainly very important. It, it, is, uh, uh, it hints uh, a violation of this uh, so-called uh, custodial symmetry um, and it, it impose uh, great challenges to this electric sector of this uh, standard model. So, so the, the question is, uh, uh, the, the big question is what, what are the implications to, to, the, to the standard model and to the beyond the standard model uh, new physics? Okay, so to, to, to answer this question or to uh, understand it in some degree, let me uh, discuss the following uh, quantities uh, which are used uh, extensively in this uh, electric uh, precision test. So these are the W mass, Z mass, uh, Fermi constant, and the, uh, the, the weak uh, mixing angle, sine theta W square. So the second column are the tree level uh, expressions. And the last column is the experimental uh, result. Okay, so I, I will use the tree level uh, expression to to discuss the uh, effects. Um, although there are loop corrections uh, in, in those uh, uh, quantities, the, the loop corrections are often redefined with the uh, SM relations. So, so it's, it's, uh, it's not clear um, to um, what, the, the, what those uh, loop corrections will um, be modified if there new, there's a new physics. So, so I, I, will, I will just use the uh, tree levels here. Um, okay, so, so uh, let me start with the Z mass, okay? That, because the Z mass is measured 
very precisely at the left. Uh, it has an uh, error bar is only two MeV. So, so, uh, so I'm going to fix this uh, uh, MZ mass. Uh, also, uh, the Fermi constant is also uh, determined very precisely by the muon lifetime. Uh, so I will also fix this uh, Fermi constant. Okay, so notice in the standard model, the Fermi constant uh, is only determined by the Higgs wave using tree level relations, okay? So if the Fermi constant is a fix, uh, the only way to make a MW larger is to increase the, uh, the gauge coupling of G2, okay? So, so that, so, so then if, if uh, the uh, gauge coupling G2 is increased to, 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 uh, to uh, such that that the, the W mass is increased by uh, a positive uh, amount of uh, 76 MeV, then you put that uh, number into the uh, weak uh, mixing angle, uh, you can find that uh, there's a, a downward shift on the uh, sine square theta W by, by this uh, amount, okay? Okay, so 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 the question is what what will happen with this uh, this shift of this uh, this uh, sine square w? So we, we carry out a, 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 a chi square fit to nineteen uh, z pole observables. So I, I will discuss these z pole observables in some details later. So so now you you please just uh, uh, bear me for a moment. Uh, so that the first column here are the, the 19 observables. The, the second column are the uh, ex experimental value from uh, PDG. And the, uh, the red region is the left fit, okay? And the uh, blue shaded region is the, the, um, the, the, the so-called uh, SMCDF fit. So in this this SMCDF fit, we use the same result, uh, the same expressions as a lab, but only change the sine square theta w by by this negative uh, shift. Okay. Okay. So so as you can see, the chi square is uh, uh, shifted from seventeen to ninety eight. So, so this shift of the chi square uh, is about uh, 91. It's roughly is a nine sigma uh, shift. Okay. So this is a uh, this uh, this uh, rough estimate is is in ballpark agreement with the uh, seven sigma deviation um, uh, in, in, uh, claimed in the CDF uh, paper. Okay. So, so as you can see, uh, so this uh, small change in the SM uh, will um, will will make the chi square fit of the standard model uh, very bad, right? But it, it, any any new physics, any BSM model, uh, a, a successful BSM model should improve this uh, chi square fit uh, better than the SM CDF uh, result. Uh, so. Um, so, so I mean, if, if the BSM model is very accessible, it should be closer to the left fit or better than the left fit. Okay. Okay. So ne next, I will discuss this uh, Stuckerberg mechanism and the Stuckerberg Stuckerberg extending models. So when, when the CDF result was announced, I, I thought maybe it could be explained by the Stuckerberg extending models because in, in one of our early papers in, in 2006, we, we have carried out a similar analysis uh, in which the W mass uncertainty was used to set constraints on, the, on this uh, so-called uh, uh, Stuckerberg extension of the standard model, STSM. 
So in this paper, we uh, extend the standard model with a new uh, neutron gauge boson uh, using the Stuckelberg mechanism. Uh, uh, so so it's, a, it's called a STSM. Uh, so in, in this model, the two by two neutron gauge boson mass matrix as discussed before is enlarged to a three by three mass matrix. So there are two uh, free parameters, a mass parameter. One is M1, the other one is M2, which I will discuss uh, uh, in more details later. Uh, so when M1 is larger than MZ, uh, one can uh, obtain a smaller Z mass than the SM expectation, okay? So, so this will provide uh, explanation to, to the CDF result, why? Uh, so as in our uh, uh, 2006 paper, we have this MW mass in the on-shell skin. Uh, then you use the, uh, the sine square theta W relation. You find that uh, this uh, MW is, uh, the, the mass MW is, is related to MZ. So any change on the MZ uh, it is raised to the M MW mass. Okay. Um, so 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 one can use these uh, the the error bar of this MW to constrain any uh, any uh, new extension on this neutron sector. So we we turn that around. So any uh, neutron uh, sector modif modification to the Z mass could uh, pro provide this. Uh, this uh, this explanation to uh, to the W mass uh, shift. Okay. okay. Also, also notice this uh, error bar of this W mass uh, back then is it, about thirty four MeV. It, it's, it's about three times larger than now. Um, okay. So so first, I thought this this will just provide a nice explanation to the CDF uh, anomaly. But, but it later turns out not that simple. So, but, but let, let me first introduce uh, you the Stuckelberg mechanisms uh, just for some of the audience who are not familiar with it. So, so this uh, Stuckelberg mechanism uh, was discovered by uh, Stuckelberg in, in his uh, 1938 paper to make the massive QED uh, gauge invariant. So what he did uh, was to introduce a new field called sigma, which has this uh, shift uh, symmetry uh, transformation, just, just like the axion field. So it, it can be easily shown that this new Lagrangian uh, is now gauge invariant and these following transformations. So this, uh, uh, the sigma field uh, becomes the longitudinal mode of the vector boson. Um, okay, so, so the Stuckelberg uh, mechanism can provide uh, gauge boson mass in, in a gauge invariant way. Okay, so then one can use this, uh, this mechanism to, to extend the uh, standard model. Uh, so a successful construction uh, here is given by Kors and Neff. Uh, so one can write down this, uh, this uh, gauge invariant mass terms shown in the last term of this Lagrangian. Um, so you, you can see there are two mass parameters, which are M1 and M2 for this uh, new gauge boson field, C mu, and the hypercharge uh, field, B mu. Uh, so, so, so this mass term is gauge invariant under the two U1 gauge transformations. One is the Hayden sector U1x uh, corresponding to the CMU field. The other one is the uh, standard model hypercharge U1. Okay, so, so now the, the, this uh, neutron gauge boson uh, mass matrix is enlarged from the, from the the two by two mass matrix to a three by three mass matrix as shown uh, before. Um, so the right and lower two by two uh, 
mass matrix is the standard model mass terms. And the uh, upper left two by two is, is due to the, the, the new Stuckerberg mass, uh, mass terms. Uh, so, 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 so the Stuckerberg mechani mechanism not only provides masses for the two U1 fields, but also provide, provides the mass mixing terms between the two U1s. Uh, so here we redefine a new parameter called epsilon, which is a ratio of M2 uh, to M1. Uh, just like uh, the standard model, one, can, one, can, one should diagonalize this mass matrix. Uh, so this uh, uh, di diagonalization leads to three mass eigenstates. Okay. One can easily check the determinant of this mass matrix is zero. So th this guarantees that uh, uh, there is a, a massless mode of this uh, this uh, 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 this this mass matrix, which can be identified to, to the mass massless photon. And it also can be easily shown that when M one is larger than M z, uh, the 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 z mass from this mass matrix. It, it is a uh, become smaller than than uh, that the case where epsilon equals zero. So as you can see, when epsilon equals zero, uh, the hidden sector M one, the C mu is decoupled from the the SM sector. So that's the SM case. Okay. So so the, this will uh, generate a, a negative contribution to the uh, Z boson mass. Okay. So now. Let, let's look at the W mass uh, again. So, so this in, in this W mass in the on-shell skin, W mass is given as follows, right? So now, now if you you can see if the in this expression, if the M Z mass becomes smaller, then uh, because there is a, a, a in the denominator of the denominator so that will uh so you, you will find that uh when mz becomes smaller uh the mw from from this expression become become larger so 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 that that will uh explain the cdf result okay so so everything everything seems okay so it seems we just need a heavy stuckerberg z prime boson to to leave the w mass However, uh, the, so we uh, in our uh, detailed chi square fit to to as I uh, showed before to fit the, the nineteen uh, z pole observables, we find that in the parameter space to uh, explain the CDF result, the total chi square in the STSM is not better than the SM CDF fit, so it's it's getting worse. So the chi square is is in, in is about one hundred or even larger. So so that means we cannot use this as TSM. So we use this simple model to 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 solve the problem. So we need to do uh, do something more. Okay. So th is there is any question before I go to the next one. Okay, let, let, let me uh, continue. So next, I will uh, tell you our new model uh, in which we introduce uh, uh, a new Stuckerberg Higgs portal interaction uh, you know, to, to explain the uh, CDF results. Okay, so, so this is the, uh, the new model. Uh, so the, the log longer is just uh, the same as before, uh, uh, except that the, the, the last two terms in the Lagrange density, right? In, in the uh, last two terms, we have introduced new interactions uh, between the Stuckerberg Higgs C and the Higgs, uh, standard model Higgs, which is a uh, phi, okay? So now, now we use this uh, C bar notation to write this U1 uh, hidden sector gauge boson in, in the gauge co uh, invariant uh, way. So the C bar is, is the hidden sector gauge boson. 
it coupled to the Higgs uh, in, in this way. Um, so the, 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 this is a parameter called the GC is a, a dimensionless uh, parameter which uh, uh, characterize this uh, strength of this uh, portal interaction. Um, uh, so there's also this, uh, this uh, covariant derivative, uh, just the, the standard model covariant derivative. But here we add a bar on, on this G1 and G2 uh, to, to emphasize that uh, these, these two gauge couplings can take uh, different values than uh, their canonical values in the standard model. Okay, so, uh, so in order to make this, uh, the, the, this uh, Lagrangian gauge invariant, uh, so one finds that uh, uh, we need either chose the, the portal interaction uh, coupling GC to be zero or M2 to be zero. So we cannot have both parameter uh, present in the model. Of course, the, the GC equals zero, we just go back to the old model STSM and we have found that that, 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 that model is not working. So we have to choose the other choice, which is MC equals zero and only the, uh, the portal interaction uh, between the uh, C field and the, uh, the Higgs field. Okay. Okay, so, so, so now, now after symmetry breaking, we have this, uh, this uh, new uh, three by three mass matrix uh, in the basis of C, the hidden sector field, B is the standard model hypercharge, and A3 is the uh, neutron component at S2L. And we, as I said before, we, we have to set this M2 to be zero. So, so although I have epsilon in this mass matrix, the, uh, in order to make this the theory gauge invariant, the epsilon had to be uh, zero. So as you can see, there are uh, mixing terms in, in this three by three mass matrix. Okay. So just as SM and, and, and as this, uh, this uh, old uh, STSM, one, one should diagonalize this mass matrix to go to eigenstates, mass eigenstates, and this diagonalization is, is, uh, is achieved by this rotation matrix called O. Okay, so, so in this uh, mass eigenstates, one can write down the uh, interaction like long genes, uh between the gauge bosons and the SM fermions uh, for the Z and the uh, Z prime. Uh, there are uh, both vector and extra vector couplings for the uh, photon, uh, there's only vector couplings. Okay, so uh, for, the, uh, for the Z boson couplings, uh, we also uh, we also add these uh, SM radiative corrections uh, inside this uh, this coupling uh, expression. So the, the radiative corrections is uh, contains in this uh, row parameter and the kappa parameter. So so in our uh, calculation in this uh, vector and SL vector couplings, we have taken into account both the these. Uh, uh, SM corrections and the new physics corrections. Okay, so, so now look, we look at the W mass again in this new model. The W mass is given, uh, is, is unchanged. It is still half G2 uh, bar uh, V. So now we fix V, that means this uh, G2 bar should be larger than its uh, uh, canonical value, uh, value in the standard model. So now we need uh, a, a shift of the W mass by uh, 76 MeV. So that, that means G2 bar should be larger than the, the canonical SM value by 0.1%. So with the M2, uh, G2 bar fixed, uh, there, there are three free parameters in this uh, in this, uh, uh, this new Stuckerberg Higgs portal model, which are M1, the, this uh, essentially this uh, Z prime mass, uh, GC, which is the dimensionless uh, 
uh, Stuckelberg Higgs coupling and GY bar, which is the hypercharged coupling, but it, it could be different from its uh, standard model uh, canonical value. Okay, so 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 what about the Z mass? Okay, so the, in the Z mass, we, we can compute this uh, this uh, mass shift uh, in this uh, this new model. The mass shift is, is given uh, by this uh, this expression. Notice it is negative if m1 is larger than mz. Okay. Okay. So from the the uh, SM relation, we 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 noted that uh, the z should be lifted uh, upward by this if the w mass is is lifted up, upward. Okay. So that's just this. Uh, uh, the we we denote this as the. Uh, delta mz uh, exper experiment value. Okay, so so in our model we want these two, the the experimental uh, change on mz and the, the theoretical change on mz to be canceled. So mz remains uh, uh, fixed to to the uh, the left value. So this can be done if m one is larger than mz as a as I said before. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah. I think that there's air codes on. Yeah. Uh, there's a question. Yeah, I have a question. The well, what is the MZ experiment? Uh, it's 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 just uh, um, so um, so when 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 we change G two, uh, that will uh, let me go back to one slide, maybe two. So you you, you can see that uh, in the uh, three three elements here. So that's the uh, that's essentially the MW mass right because that's uh, uh mw square so now mw is a larger so that will uh that will give a, a larger uh input in this mass matrix so but there's also uh, the mixing terms will make this uh, mz sorry would you say mw so so the uh, the, the point is the three three elements will will increase the uh, z mass, but the mixing terms has the effect to uh, to uh, decrease the, the z mass. So so I want these two effects to, to be to be cancelled uh, against each other. Okay, so if if I turn off G C, then uh, because I want MW to be larger than before. So this two by the lower right two by two mass matrix will, will, will lead to a, a, a larger a Z mass. And then I use this uh, GC parameter to, to cancel that effect. So, so, the, the, um, so I think that uh, the, the, these are the, these two effects. So I, I, I denote this wise uh, theory uh, uh, contribution, which is uh, proportional to GC square, the, the other one is just uh, um, it, it just caused by by the larger G two web. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, let on, me... Again, the, so in this second equation, you assume cosine theta W does not change. Uh, so a theta w could be changed a little bit, but that change is uh, so. Well, I, I ignore that change for, for the moment. Is uh, so. It, it, this is just a qualitative way to to understand this uh, this relation. But in, in the real analysis, we don't use this. But uh, so theta w could be changed a little bit, but that that effect is. Uh, um, yeah, so that's a good question. So, uh, uh, so
So this is just a, a way to to understand these uh, the two effects from 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 the from the um, the the Z mass uh, change. Uh, sorry, the W mass change and these uh, the effects from the uh, hidden sector uh, gate boson. Okay, uh, so should I go on? <laughs> okay. Okay, so so uh, maybe I, I let, let, let me finish. Maybe I, I we can come back to this again. Uh, um, okay, so so now now I I will discuss the experimental constraints on, on this model. Um, so, so as I mentioned before, the, the important experimental constraints come from the position measurements of these z pole observables, uh, the mainly uh, measured at lab. Uh, so one of the uh, physical quantity that go into many of these observables is the partial decay weight of z boson, which is uh, calculated by, by, by this uh, uh, formula. So this uh, R, um, RF contains these uh, um, SM reditive corrections. Uh, it it uh, had both QD and QCD corrections. And there's um, the, 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 the VFEF are these uh, Z uh, coupling to fermions. Uh, as I uh, mentioned before, it, it has both new physics tree level corrections and SM radiative corrections in, in these two quantities. Okay, so with this uh, partial width, one can compute uh, a number of uh, Z boson observables. Uh, so the first one, we, we can uh, sum all this uh, uh, partial width to, to, to obtain the total Z width. And then we can also compute the so-called hadronic cross-section, sigma hadronic, and we can compute some uh, ratios uh, uh, of the partial weight, the leptonic partial weight, uh, hadronic partial weight uh, re with respect to the total hadronic weight. Uh, there are also some uh, asymmetry quantities called AF and EFBOF. Uh, these are essentially uh, defined by these uh, vector and axial vector couplings. Okay, we, with all this, we, we, can, uh, we can compute uh, these uh, uh, this is Z-pole observables uh, in this table. So I, 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 have, sh I have shown you this uh, table before. So, so the, the, again, this first column is, are these nine, 19 uh, Z-pole observables as I just defined in the last slide. Uh, the second column uh, are the experimental values from PDG uh, uh, to, to uh, 2020. And uh, as I mentioned that the, uh, this one is the left fit. So, 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 so we can actually repeat this uh, left fit. And we, uh, so we find that uh, the left fit has a very nice chi-square is only uh, 17. And I show, uh, mentioned this uh, SMCDF fit where, where one just naive change this uh, sine square theta W by to, to, to feed this MW, that, that gives a, a, a profit of about uh, the total cost square about 98. So, so the last one is, is, the, is our model, uh, the bench part, benchmark model point in our model. Uh, it has three, three parameters, as I mentioned before, M1, the um, uh, still heat coupling GC, and the hypercharge coupling GY, but it, 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 it will, you can deviate from the GY SM value by, by 0.05%. Okay, this is this model point. So as you can see, uh, this new model can uh, significantly improve this, uh, the chi-square from the SM CDF. It is almost as good as this uh, left fit. So we also carry out a Monte Carlo scans in, in the 
in the 3D parameter space spanned by the, the three free parameters in the model, which are M1, uh, GC, and GY bar, okay? Uh, so this figure shows that the total chi-square as a function as a GY bar. Um, so in the blue band, the, 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 the Z mass from, 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 the, from the three by three mass matrix calculation agrees with the experimental value within two MeV. Uh, so as you can see, this uh, the best chi square uh, in in this uh, blue region um, occurs in in this uh, uh, in, in the value where gy bar is uh, about 0.05 percent larger than gy. Okay. So um, so one one can actually try to um, try to uh, to uh, qualitatively understand why why we, we need a slightly larger GY. So now we look at this SM uh, couplings. So the, uh, and also this asymmetry observables. Uh, we can find that these asymmetry uh, observables, EF and EFB are essentially uh, proportional to, in some way, uh, the ratio of VF to, to, to EF. So in the new model, so you, you can find that uh, this uh, VF and EF is essentially determined by this, uh, the rotation ma ma mass matrix O22 to O32. And in this model, this, this ratio O22 to O32 is equal to minus GY bar over G2 bar. Okay, so now we increase G2 to fit this uh, CDF result. So, so in order to make this uh, asymmetry uh, factor, the ratio uh, in, uh, somehow unchanged, one ha has to also increase the GY bar. That, that's why we, we need a, a slightly larger GY bar in, in the last slide. Okay, uh, so there are some other experimental constraints. Uh, so we find that the most uh, important one is the dilepton resonance search for the Z, Z prime boson at the large hadron collider. The figure shows that the atlas constraints with the uh, 139 Fentel bar uh, inverse data. Uh, we have fixed the GY bar to the best value. So there are, there are not, not there are two free parameters left. One is M1 is on the X axis, which is essentially the Z prime mass. The other one is GC. Now here we uh, define a new quantity called delta, which is the ratio of GCV over M1 square, uh, which on the Y axis. So the blue shaded region shows uh, the parameter space to, to uh, explain the CDF result. And the shaded region shows the exclusion from atlas, okay. So in order to explain the CDF result, one needs almost a constant of delta, which about uh, seven times uh, 10 to minus three. Um, and you can see the atlas data already constrain M1 to be larger than 300. Uh, the Z prime boson in this model can be uh, tested in the, in, uh, with common data, LC data in the round three. Okay, so this brings me to the uh, summary. Um, okay, so uh, recently the CDF uh, result on the WMAS uh, imposed great challenges to the electric sector of this data model. Uh, we uh, find that although a heavy Z prime can explain the Z, uh, the WMAS normally, uh, but uh, the uh, simple mass mixing terms using the uh, Stukov mechanism uh, cannot, uh, cannot give uh, a good fit to the ZIP observables. So we introduce uh, Stukov Higgs portal interaction. Uh, in, in this model can both explain the W mass anomaly and also uh, fit the ZIP observables uh, as good as the left fit. And this model can be uh, tested in, in this uh, uh, new rounds of uh, LEC. Uh, okay, thank you.
Okay, thank you very much. So, any questions? Hi, uh, thank you very much for the nice talk. Uh, could you show this uh, uh, the slide with the uh, six portal interaction? Uh, sorry, which one? Uh, you, you mean the um, definition of model? Yeah. This one? Yeah, here. Yeah, okay. here. It's, you know, the CMU bar has a CMU plus a del mu sigma over M1. So GC scale is actually uh, including include a container dimension six operators, right? Higher dimensional operator. So this is not a normalizable model actually. And in in your calculation, you completely ignore this the sigma field. Do you ignore the sigma field? Yeah. Uh, so the sigma field the, it becomes the. Um longitudinal mode of this circuit boson in the unitary gauge. So yes. So uh, so is is essentially the uh, the C mu and the sigma the, the the partial partial mu sigma over M one combined into a gate boson. So yeah, I am I am asking this question because. Uh, this scalable mechanism is also uh, widely used in the dark matter physics okay. to probe the uh, uh, mass for the dark photon. Okay. And uh, in certain cases, uh, this is especially the I mean, the interaction Lagrangian like uh, GC scale term is often used as a Higgs portal interaction, but the uh, it's not real. It's it's not renormalizable in a sense. So I think the this uh, uh, when you calculate actually so your model is not renormalizable if you include the mu sigma I think uh, so I I was wondering what would be the effect of this uh, uh, mu sigma for example if simu bar simu bar couples to the fermion current then the mu sigma will couple to the conserved current so. Uh, after partial integration, uh, sigma coupling has no physical effect because uh, it's zero because of the conservation of the fermion current. But the, in this case, uh, when you uh, have uh, this uh, phi over phi times C mu bar scale, so you, you cannot, I mean, even if you do partial integration, the sigma field effect does not uh, disappear, right? Um, uh, so, so okay, so I, uh, so anyway, you, you, your actual calculation, you you did not uh, study, you, you did not consider the dynamical role of a sigma field, right? Assuming it's uh, just a, uh, just it's 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 uh, just uh, it becomes a longitudinal gauge boson. Yeah, yeah, we 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 we. Uh, we uh, we use the unitary gauge to absorb the sigma into C. So, so the uh, sigma sigma field is is uh, is gone in in the uh, fi the final particle spectrum. So uh, maybe I think the I will I will ask uh, I will communicate with you by email about this issue. Yeah. Okay. Later. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, also, I, I need to think about this little in more details. Uh, I, I, I will, I will uh, yeah. So, yeah, so we are in the behind the time, but we get one question. You, you, you may uh, explain already, uh, but uh, I, I have a question about the case for uh, like the G prime uh, case. Uh, do, uh, do, do you have a um, more comment on about that? No, so, sorry, the question I, I didn't hear uh, clearly. Uh, yeah, uh, my uh, question is, uh, uh, could you explain more about the case for MG prime lighter than MZ? Oh, MZ prime is lighter than MZ? Yes. Okay, uh, so the um, in that case, the uh, 
Uh, so I, I think that M, M, MZ prime is lighter than MZ. M. Essentially, if you, if, I mean, if M, M1 is much lighter than MZ, that's dark photon. Uh, but uh, uh, as you can see from, from uh, maybe the, the, the next one. Uh, sorry, what, which one? Uh, sorry. Um, okay, let, let's look at this one. So, uh, so the M1 is larger than MZ, the, uh, the, 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 the Z mass is become uh, smaller than, uh, than the standard model case. If M1 is lighter, uh, I mean, which is the dark photon case, the Z mass is actually lift upward. Uh, so that, that cannot uh, explain the CDF um, so anomaly so because that, that's just in the wrong direction. Uh, so, it, so it means excluded. Uh, um, maybe I can go to the, the other one. Uh, so maybe this one and then the next one I try to. Uh, so, so here, so, uh, so I try to use the, uh, so, so, so the, the we were trying to fix MZ, right? Because MZ is, uh, is measured very precisely at left. So now, now if you want to explain W, you want to, uh, there's a positive shift um, on the Z mass. And if M1 is uh, smaller than MZ, so the, from, from the first line, you also get a positive contribution. So these two cannot cancel. So we want the, the, the first, the theoretical um, MZ from the mass matrix also the CDF shift on the MZ to cancel. So that, so, so it is, we, we have, we, we have to use a, a heavier um, Z, Z prime, not a lighter one. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so let's okay. to speak again. Okay. And thank you. Yeah. Okay, bye. Bye.